just run through some demonstrations, uh, show off the ABS and the traction control systems on the bikes, uh, and then we'll head off on our ride. We'll head down the bitumen first, then come back and we head off up there. So the first thing I'm going to show is the brake system. So ABS and how that helps you as a rider. So the ABS system works off two wheel speed sensors and it calculates or reads the, the surface about 300 times a second. Right, mate? Yeah. Roll back a little bit more. Yeah. You're nearly in a spot there. Keep straighten the bars up. A bit more, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Try that. Okay. Is that enough? Yep. It reads and, and adjusts for the surface. So ABS is an anti-lock braking system. So it means while that system's activated, you can't lock a wheel up and and crash from a wheel locker. All right. So if you can get off your bikes, guys, if your bike's in a spot where that's possible, we're going to wander over here. Pam's going to do a first demonstration. We'll be over on the road here. So just wander down to the edge here. So what he's going to do. Part of this demonstration is to show off the mode systems that Chris would have spoken about a little bit in the briefings. So one of the benefits of the newer bikes is they have these modes where the systems are calibrated for road and for off-road use. So what he's got now is road, he's got the bike in road mode, which is road calibrated, ABS. So he's just going to come along now, basically use four fingers on the brakes, press the rear brake as hard as possible and do an emergency stop. Tail light, tail light flashing a little bit too. That's another safety feature so that when you brake hard or maybe you have to fire it off, tail light light. Try and get the attention of traffic behind you as well. Um, but you can see how stable the bike stayed. No tuck, there was no funny reaction, the bike just slowed to a stop. If he didn't have ABS, that would be a crash because he literally has four fingers on the brake as hard as possible, pushing on the rear brake pedal as hard as possible. And you can see how quickly the bike stops and how stable it remains. It's in control. Can we see the comparison? <laughs> sure, it would. It would be fair. This one is probably my favourite. Um, so this time, what Cam's going to do is come down the road and swing onto the bit onto the dirt but he's going to start his brake brake application on the bitumen and run it onto the onto the gravel so the application of the brakes doesn't change there he grabs a fistful of front brake steps on the rear brake as hard as possible and lets the electronics deal with the surface change so that's a really good one to show how quick it reacts. That's on, road. that's on road mode, is it? Yep, that's in road mode. So I guess that's a, you know, a bit of a example of a bit hot into a turn, running wide, running out of road, running out of road, and you run off the road onto gravel. Obviously lean angle's a factor, but if you can pick the bike up, you know you can squeeze the brakes as hard as possible. If the bike's upright and straight, you can run it from the road to the gravel and not have to stress about a front wheel lockup causing you problems. You might have to stress about the cliff you're about to ride off, but <laughs> you're not going to lock a front wheel up. Okay, and to see how quick it reacts to that surface change, such a massive surface change there from bitumen to gravel, um, and you don't even get a flinch out of it, it's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. So what he's going to do now is switch from road mode to enduro mode. So that then changes ABS to off-road calibrated system. And you'll see when he comes down to do the stop, to get into the wheel. If you watch the wheel, listen to the tires. See the market leads in the gravel as well. It's almost like micro skids. So what it does, what the ABS system does when it goes into off-road mode is allow more slip 
before it intervenes and releases the brake. So it gives the tyres more chance to bite into a loose surface, if that makes sense. Both brakes or just the rear? Both brakes, yeah. yep, that was both brakes. Um, so in the past, to compare, when ABS was first around on the bikes, it was road calibrated, and when riders went off-road, the general consensus was switch ABS off completely because it's too sensitive, and when you're on a gravel surface, you go to squeeze the brakes, and it almost feels like you have no brakes in some situations because it's so sensitive, it just keeps releasing the brakes because it doesn't want to let a wheel lock up, and it's not a nice feeling. Whereas now that system's been calibrated for this type of surface, or an off-road surface, and it allows that little bit more slip before it intervenes and eases the brakes off to avoid a wheel lock up. So essentially you just get a really efficient braking um, on get efficient braking on an off-road surface when you've still got that safety net. You can see there was, at no point did the front tuck or look like it was unstable, but it still stopped very efficiently. So another bonus when the mode system become available, there's another mode that's optional on all these bikes. It's standard, it's just not fitted. You actually have to put a plug in that comes under the seat on the 1200s and on the newer 800s as well. And that opens up a mode called Enduro Pro. And when you do that, one of the biggest features is it releases ABS on the rear brake. So you only have ABS on the front wheel, but not on the rear, which allows you to maneuver the bike and things like a rear brake slide which if you come from an enduro background or motocross or lots of off-road riding that's a technique or a, a skill that is very practical a lot of riders use the rear brake lock up and a slide or a skid quite a bit so that allows you to do that while still remaining or still having that safety net of abs on the front brake Right, so that was a, a very well received change too with, with the modes. You also have that Enduro Pro mode where you can lock the rear wheel up. In the past, uh, an experienced off-road rider that wanted to do that would have to switch ABS off completely so you lose that safety net on the front brake as well, just so you can lock the back brake up. So it's a nice, nice feature to have. Um, so, the next one we're going to, any questions with ABS? So it's pretty impressive. I love seeing that transition one from road to dirt. I know as a rider when we do that demo, you, you're nervous every time you do it, because in theory it shouldn't work. You should crash. Yeah, Chris was saying about putting a lot of putting a lot of trust in, in uh, yeah, some programming there, but anyway, it works. Yeah, Chris was saying, tell us about the, um, the aluminium plates and the safety water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we do that one too, and yeah, that's that's scary. And there's actually a bike that we use sometimes, I've ridden it a couple of times, it's an ABS demonstration bike. It's got outriggers on it, with these big nylon skid plates on the outriggers. I don't know if you YouTube it, you'll see it. It's a Bosch bike. It's an 800, GS 800. And you ride along, and you turn ABS off, and you grab a fistful of brakes, and you got to hold on as tight as you can, and you, you let it crash, but it crashes onto that. Yeah. It's crazy, it's scary, it's stupid. Anyway, I've done that once, not again. So, if there's no more questions with ABS, we're going to switch over now and talk about traction control. So, same wheel speed sensors, same sort of 300 times a second as far as it reads the surface and reacts, but this is all about throttle input and how the power is delivered by the rear wheel and wheel spin. So traction control is there to, to stop excessive wheel spin and stop losing control via the rear wheel sliding out if you give it a little bit too much right hand. So the first one he's going to do is go to road mode and this is just to show how sensitive it is and how well it works. So he'll be in road mode and he's going to snap the throttle from 0 to 100%. but there's zero instability. You'll see him come back, he'll probably throw some lean angle in and snap the throttle as well. What mode was that in? So this is in road mode. So you can see even with full throttle and the bike went over, little skip, but yeah, it doesn't move. You have, 
if he had no traction control in that situation and you went from zero to 100 percent throttle on a 1200 yeah. especially with lean angle it's a crash there's, there's no other way that ends that's a crash so again just showing how well and that system reacts to the, the input um, so if you take that like i said it's road mode if you take that out onto the road manhole covers white lines in the wet all that sort of stuff if you it doesn't always it's not always the rider's mistake you might misread the surface or you get caught out by something on the surface that you didn't see and hopefully that can stop you know a bad result the problem with that is like i talked about with abs in the past when traction control was first around it was road calibrated only and you can see how sensitive that is if you do a lot of off-road riding that's not much fun off-road you can't slide the bike at all um, if it's corrugated and you're up a bit of a hill, it will intervene that much, it would probably bring you to a stop. You wouldn't actually be able to ride up the hill. So, same as ABS, um, there's now off-road calibrated systems. So we'll see Cam come through and do the same thing with the right control inputs. In enduro mode, it frees up the traction control. So he'll be able to slide the bike a little bit. There still is traction control there. If he gets that wrong or gives it too much throttle, it will intervene and bring the bike back in line. Notice his throttle application. It's not a big chop of the throttle. You listen. Here it's still being feathered. He's still smooth. Smooth with the throttle. If you just went from 0 to 100% with a heap of lean angle, it would snap into such... Um, excessive wheel spin that traction control will still intervene and bring the bike back. Does the traction control would come on if it keeps the throttle open? Yeah. It doesn't yep. want it. Yeah. Yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah. If you just held that flat out and tried to. Ha so he's getting yeah. the bike into a slide and then managing it and trying to. Yeah, let's right. say, you know, it's it's got. It goes into 10% wheel spin. Mm -hmm. Just as an example, it's not. That's not a scientific number for the bike. If he increases that wheel spin to 30%, that might be where traction control intervenes. Yeah. But if you're good enough with the throttle and you get it to that slight amount of wheel spin, and you can then manage it and maintain it in that zone, you can carry a drift off a, a turn for 100 metres. But if you give it too much throttle and it starts getting too much wheel spin, traction control will intervene still. Does that make sense? Sorry? Yeah, you can also do that too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is there any traction control in 